Hello and welcome to the Knicks Boots from Start to Finish podcast. My name is Shyler Mao. Let's go around the room. Introduce yourselves, please. We'll go with you first. Lucas? I am Lucas Grasberger. I'm Rebecca Burnham. And Nathan Cromer. Cool. Uh, we're going to do a Q&A today. Thank you guys for listening. Um, and thank you so much. We're going to try and wrap up all the questions that are left on the current uh, Q&A post on Reddit um, and get a new one up so you guys can continue to uh, to ask the, the real hard-hitting stuff here. Um, <clears throat> I'll start out with the first question. Um, you guys mentioned that the LTT pattern has been improved before. What was the initial pattern like and, and what problem did the new one fix? Nathan, can you speak yeah, to that? Yeah, I can speak to that. So I was the one who adjusted the patterning back up. Um, if you had LTTs back 27 and bef- 2017 and before, uh, biggest difference was you had a little bit of changes in the heel area and the instep area. So Historically, prior to the the adjustment, insteps could come a little bit close in the lacing and the heel could slip a little bit more than our normal pattern. So the biggest adjustment, we took all of those, graded them against our standard patterns, recut the heels so that they fit like your normal Knicks, and then adjusted the instep so that it, again, fit like uh, your normal Knicks and laced up properly. So those are like the two biggest things we did. Uh, Make some improvements to the toe construction to make um, it possible to add steel and comp toes. Um, But yeah, so it's been a big success. Yeah, it's it's a great pattern. I hope you guys uh, buy a ton of them. A lot of work (laughs) went into that. Um, Thank you, Nathan. All right. Uh, So this question confuses me a little bit. Any plans for casual suede rough out offerings? I don't know. I'm not aware of any suede specifically, like true splits. Um... I believe we do offer a rough out on quite a few of our heritage We do. I, I think they might be referring to like a th- thinner leather. Like we've talked about doing Predator Orange before, um, mm. but the rough out side is inconsistent in the color. Yeah, so it's pretty orange. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. sometimes it'll come yeah. in really orange. Sometimes it's not like struck through. Okay. Um, so I think that might be what they're referring to. Yeah, I'd love love to hear, you know, feel free to suggest specific leathers that you think we we should be looking at. Um, obviously, we have rough out optimized for pretty much all of our work leathers. The waxed fleshes are rough out. They're just waxed, so they are a little smoother than what you might t- traditionally see from a nap standpoint. Um, we do have some additional, well, I guess, you know, duh. we do have um, black wax flesh mm-hmm. um, coming up as a rotating off- um, offering. So, yes, we do. Um, and, uh, but, but beyond that, if there's anything we don't have that you'd like us to see and bring on a rotating basis, or, you know, if it does well, maybe a permanent side, please let us know. I'd probably add real quick. I think the best looking heritage rough out is 64 Brown rough out. I agree. It just ages so well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a great leather. If Um, you're on the fence about it, you should go with that. I think like a six and a half ounce rough out would be cool. Yeah. Like a true rough out, not a waxed. Hmm. Um, yeah. I think I don't know if we'd ever do like a suede split or anything like that, but a thinner rough out would be cool. Yeah, I don't know. We we have I have an aversion to suede just because it yeah. is traditionally a less expensive, maybe less. I don't know about high quality, but for, for those who are not aware, suede is basically split from the um, you know outer side of the the flesh side of of the animal. Or, I'm not sorry, not flesh side the what would you call it? I'm sorry, I'm blanking on it. Like the skin side. So right. the smooth side. Uh, the smooth side. Yeah. So it's split from the smooth side, and it's basically what's left over um, for a lot of uses. Now, obviously, we use relatively thick leather, and so there's not as much just hide in general to split down. Um, but you know, if like somebody was using like like furniture or something like that, something that was maybe like one to, to 1.2 millimeters thick, like you typically see in like car upholstery or something whatever they're shaving off would typically be sold as suede. Um, And it's usually less expensive because it's kind of an after product of the primary usage of the hide. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not as strong for that reason. Um, But, you know, in the right application, I know there are some very nice suede boots out there that, um, so I'm not really denigrating that, but I'm saying our, you know, our history is kind of this like super hardy boot. In my opinion, it doesn't always fit as well with suede, but um, definitely open to that. Yeah. I'd love to see more Meet the Cobbler episodes. I like the idea of knowing who's making our boots. Um, Rebecca, do you like Meet the Cobbler episodes? I do, particularly because the office gets the rest of the cobbler. 
<laughs> so stays around on the fridge. Yes, but yeah. I do believe there's plans for more cobbler with cobbler episodes. We've got a list of people who've signed up and want some of Kelsey's cobbler. So. Yeah, you know, and speaking of cobbler, Kelsey, yes, I reimburse. You know, we reimburse you obviously for the supplies. And the, holy crap, inflation is real, man. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Like the um, she also doesn't make crap cobbler. Well, so. that's true. true but yeah. I mean, we're talking yeah. about <laughs> thirty bucks in ingredients for yeah. a cobbler, and I, you know, that's just. I don't know. That's that's crazy to me. But uh, expensive. yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. No, I get it. I get it. Um, I'm not complaining about you. I'm complaining about <laughs> the broader Inflation. situation yeah. that's going on. I'm I'm obviously biased, but I think the Cobbler with Cobbler uh, podcast is great. Yeah, yeah, we do. So next week we have um, one scheduled for Monday. Yeah. Not not to be released, but to record on Monday, and that that'll be going out what the following. Weekend, okay. Yep. So, and then yeah. I already have Surge is going to be next after that. I'm really excited Ooh. about that. I think Ooh. that's going to be awesome. Stay tuned. So Surge yeah. is our production manager. He's been here for like twenty plus years. Yeah. Um, that may be an exaggeration, but no, I, I think it's it, over twenty years. Yeah, yeah I think it's, it, yeah. I think he's been doing this longer than mm-hmm. I've been alive. Yeah. So. so he's he is a kind of an amazing story, and obviously I'll let him let him tell that. But uh, um, yeah, excited to have him on and. Uh, really really kind of the engine of our of our mm-hmm. production so yeah um great to awesome. hear from him yeah i think that'll be the most i will ever hear search talk right <laughs> most things are yes no he's a man of few words very what do you mean he's, he's, very, he's very efficient that's true um any plans to offer the riverfront and wicked and craig double stuffed is the riverfront always mock toad no, no. So the riverfront okay. is different patterning. Um, it's our only boot that doesn't have a gusseted tongue. Oh, right. Um, so it's got like a bellowed tongue to it. Yep. So it's yeah, completely different patterning, which makes it a little difficult on a merchandising standpoint uh, mm-hmm. because I can't just lump it in as like, yeah. you know, make it a four inch because it's a completely right. different pattern. Um, it kind of is what it is, which yeah, is which is right. a little unpopular. Which is, yeah. um, I think it's a great boot. Yeah. But, but there's it, no reason why we can't do it. No. Yeah, but yeah. it just, it's, you know. Yeah. As so we just, release just time more and things, just time yeah. and just time. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, but yes, I think that's a great idea. And um you know, I think we, we are, actually just got the souls in too. Yeah, we got yeah, the twenty six souls. souls. So it, probably so sooner than later. They're probably going on quick ship soon yeah. with the wedge soul option. I know a yep. lot of people have been asking for that. Yep. Um yeah, I can see us doing double stuffed. It's just you know, we've got a lot of new products. We have new lasts, new patterns, yeah, more new patterns coming, and so it's mm. It's tricky merchandising yeah, all that I mean, together. I don't, I don't know. Like I, Rebecca, you and I literally just talked about this, and I feel like, um, are we launching too many things? I know that's that sounds crazy, but like, is there some fatigue out there? I know that it's like, I don't know. There's a lot of people vying for your attention, not just for boots, just in general, you know. And yeah. and so like, um, does it lose some of its maybe? uniqueness or something like that the way we do it which right. we're just kind of pedal to the metal and that's how we've been since 2020 um i wonder if maybe there's more measured approaches we could be taking right now um but like i don't know just kind of philosophically but with that said i think that's more true of like our variants you know that we're doing right mm-hmm. here um i would say like in a broader sense i think we have gotten a lot more We've spent a lot more time on these new product launches, right? So we're going to have a, you know, a new pull-on option that's going to be launching on Memorial Day that we're very proud of. It's probably like the big launch of the first half of the year. And I've been like sensitive to it. So like just some kind of from a business standpoint, like we launched the Tactical last year in April and that was a big boost for us, you know, it exposed us to a new market. Um, but this, this new pull-on is a little different. It's a little more unique. And I think like we got the tactical right but maybe like we're just rushing not in a bad way it ended up great it's a great boot but there was a lot of stress and so like this this time we are i think really making sure that we get it right Mm -hmm. and so things are just kind of taking longer like basically like as we take on projects that are harder they're taking longer for us to execute Mm -hmm. on is Mm -hmm. i guess in a nutshell yeah okay yeah good, good question um ah charcoal cypress yeah um is is charcoal cypress making a return in the future um i don't know specifically about charcoal cypress you know it it sold out really fast um i was i was surprised um it's kind of funny because like 
cutting is giving me the business because it's like taking up a bunch of rack space because we haven't started making them. Mm. But it sold out so fast that it seems a little silly to be like having it sit there. So we may put a bunch through just yeah. just to clear some space. Yeah. So hopefully nobody's too mad about that. Um, but um, I don't know. What do you guys what do you guys think about the charcoal cypress? So I, I think it definitely um, proves that there is something to having a gray leather option. Yep. Um, yeah. Something we haven't had before. Uh, I know we're looking at a couple other similar colors from some different tanneries yeah. that I think will do really well also. Well, we have we have um, we have the gray from mm -hmm. Wicket. Yeah, yeah we the just Wicket got the sample in. Yeah, so yeah we just did a, the limited release, uh, the slate uh, uh, belts, belts, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So when is that boot going to be done? Boots are going through real soon. So I think uh, there might be a beneficiary <laughs> beneficiary of the well, boots I, here. Becca, Becca and, uh, I know you're a big gray fan. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I am. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're doing my Chelsea's mm -hmm. in the Wicked and Craig gray. Oh, wow. So okay. I liked the charcoal cypress, yeah. but I think I like the, it's the Wicked and a, Craig better. Kind of a wombo it's a little yeah. lighter. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's a it's Chelsea, cool Wicked, it's, it, double you know, stuff. Just like most of the double stuff, it's really dark mm -hmm. until it starts to flex and yeah. bend. So it almost looks black. And then at the bend points, at the heel counter, at the toe, it's going to be a, a gray. So when do we think we'll have that as an option? It's a couple of weeks at the most. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, and I mean, so because we're building a Chelsea in double stuff, it also means we're going to have to introduce Wiccan and Craig Chelsea options. Oh, well, yeah. no. So, yeah, that's a good point. That's, Darn. that's coming that's as great. well with that letter. No, that's awesome. Yeah. So to summarize, I don't know specifically about the charcoal cypress, um, but you will see more gray options. Mm -hmm. Didn't we? Oh gosh, I almost don't want to say this. Did we or did I order Predator, Predator Steel? You didn't. No, I didn't. You okay. didn't. It's okay. not. Yeah, we okay. talked about it. Okay. I think. I think we got our wires crossed, and you ended up ordering the Cypress instead of the Steel. Okay, it's hard for me. To keep um, all so this it was almost kind started. of an accident. Um, Pretty reasonable but, though. Yeah, it was funny. I remember I tried to change it. Yeah. To British Tan at the last minute, and he's like, "No, nope, sorry, it's already, it's already, <laughs> already started. started. Uh, I already anyway. made it." But I, I think, I mean, to your point about taking up leather space, I think you know it makes sense for these limited leather releases to have them go, go through, through a, little a little bit faster. faster yeah. So that might be something yeah. to expect with limited edition yeah. leathers. Yeah, uh, mostly just so we're not taking up a yeah, bunch we're, of racks. We're, so yeah, I mean, I, anyway, I'll go back to the summary. Um, we do. I don't know about charcoal cypress, but we do have a new gray option coming in Wicked and Crack. Mm -hmm. So look for that. Um, I think that'll be awesome. And then to Lucas's point, we we are short on space back there, so we're actually going through a like a bidding process on remodels to kind of open up. We have we have plenty of space, I'd say, like within the walls of the building. Um, there's just a lot of unused space that is not really optimized for what we need it to be. So cool. Um, is it recommended to treat the veg tan leather insole with any oil grease conditioner or anything similar, or just leave it be? If so, would it be best to do it first thing on a new boot or wait until it breaks in a bit? Nathan, Lucas, yeah. Rebecca, any it's questions? It's kind of hard to give a blanket answer. I'd say everyone's feet are different. Like if, you're, if your feet are really sweaty and it dries out your insole, um, you can always put a little bit of open off soil on the, on the insole, let it sit overnight, and it should soak in. Um, otherwise, like I a have lot never of people, done yeah, yeah, I've yeah never put a lot of people don't yeah. worry about it. And I, it, it does fine. I know was it Joey who said he does puts oil on the insole if there's any kind of like issues with squeaking and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah, uh, it can help minor squeaks if right. if they develop. Yeah, I don't think you necessarily need to condition the insole. Um, I also have never put anything inside of my boots in terms of like conditioner or anything like that. I feel like I'd get my socks all gross and. <laughs> covered in oil um mm -hmm. but yeah i mean it helps for things like squeaks it's not going to hurt the leather i don't think no yeah sorry i don't have a more definitive answer on that i think it depends um i'd say i probably, think the vast majority of people are fine not yeah. doing anything yeah i'd say probably yeah. don't need to do it okay yeah <laughs> can we get a larger eyelet option at the top of the builder pro boat so we can do the loggers not more easily so we have a big eye was I yeah. supposed to say that? No, no, that was fine. I mean, we've talked about it. Yeah. Um, it. It's definitely. I mean, it's just. It's a. It's a setting machine and hardware and. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's not super easy. It. Yeah. It's. Yeah. It's. It's a new eyeliner and it's new mm -hmm. hardware and it's certainly possible. Mm -hmm. Um. I thought we were doing one like for 
Yeah, with off, off, off the top with Grant, uh, I think he and Bucken are working on something. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I don't know if it's got past working on something. So that's one of our, you know, kind of yeah. friends of the show, Buck mm-hmm. and Billy Ray. And um, I think that's where most of these inquiries yeah, come yeah, from, probably. is people seeing his videos yeah. where we did it for him. Yeah. No, so it's a, it's a good idea. I, I think um, it's something we're working on. Yeah. Um, no timeline, though. Um, any plans to make a roofing boot? Hmm. Not immediately at least I, I, mean, yeah. I just thought you know it's the first time i'm thinking i've thought about it what makes a roofing boot it's a good question i don't know so we'd have to do some research on that um i mean we've talked i've talked to a couple roofers who i think just got like travelers mm-hmm. like they just yeah, need fairly soul. Yeah. flat yeah. sole maybe something a little more slip resistant i yeah. know if you're on like metal roofing yeah, yeah. um it's probably a slip resistant yeah. sole mm-hmm. so i mean and we like are looking maximum at maximum flexibility maybe yeah we are looking at some new sole options, I think, mm-hmm. that come with slip resistance, uh, yeah. some that are wedges. It's a U.S. Um, supplier. Yeah. yeah. And I wonder if, like, maybe less midsole, you know, so mm-hmm. it's more for kneeling. and yeah, yeah, it's a good flexibility. Yeah. yeah, that was kind of the goal with the, the hardware. Mm-hmm. Pro, uh, yeah. The hardware pro, yeah. Uh, it's the 360 construction, so it's a little more flexible. It's yeah. got the Sierra outsole, which I don't know if it's slip resistant or not. I think it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Kelsey. Is that say slip resistant? No. Okay. So it's, <laughs> it's not slip resistant, uh, but we are working on slip resistant wedge sole. Okay. Options. Yeah. No, it's a good idea. Um, I think you could see a configuration that would at least meet that need um, shortly. Do you guys plan on adding eight inches to the cutter's choice? It's the only thing stopping me from ordering a pair. Sure. Why not? That's we get that request a lot. Well, that's good. like the one change. I guess we can do it. Yeah, that's it's, great. It's one of those things. At a certain point, then it's just like, what's the difference in that and the quick ship? Well, the cutter's choice is it gives us the flexibility on the ladder. Yeah, a yeah. bit. Yeah. So, yeah. and if it's eight inch, it's, yeah, I love it. That's great. Yeah. yeah, let's do it. So that's on Lucas's list. Okay, I, it's on my list now. <laughs> um, any plans for side zip quick ship? Yes. It's kind of fun to say. Um, so one thing we're doing right now um, that you'll see. Um, our date for launch, Lucas has a big project ahead of him. Um, we're hoping to launch it by next, the end of next week is to have every silhouette in a quick ship configuration. Um, it wouldn't have every option available, obviously, every leather option available. Um, you know, um, so if you are thinking, if you have something specifically in mind, definitely don't hesitate to buy it. You should buy it now. We are looking at getting um, uh, more, more of what we have available for quick ship. Yeah, I, I will. I just want to add real quick. Um, to that point, there will be some products, some models that won't be on Quick Ship. Um, mostly just be like the Woodsman, things like that. That like That's take fair. take an extra two weeks to build. Uh, we probably won't do on Quick Ship, but all the pretty standard models that we we sell. Will the sides up be okay? I don't see why not. I mean, I don't know how long it takes production to uh, get that done, but okay. I think I think it should be doable. It should be fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, any chance we'll ever, we'll ever see a half lug sole? Mini is too many. V100 is too much. Uh, yeah. So we're working on something that would fit that profile right now. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully months, I would say. Mm-hmm. Months, yeah. I would say. I, I'd, I'd hope to have that ready by fall. Yeah. Any chance we can see a Mokto lug sole option on the quick ship page? Same question. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's okay. coming. Um, if you're able to get a high arch on a wedge sole, would it be possible to get a high arch on an H&W style boot with a block heel? Wow. You can already do that. You should be able to pick heel height options on 55 last boots. No, I think and, they're and asking the high arch H&W. Right, so block it would heel. be, yeah, they want a block heel with a high arch. Well... That's confusing to me. So, yeah. so how would you get? A seems, I guess it depends on consistent. what they mean by H and W style. Yeah, yeah. If they just mean the lower Hard heel, to define. that's that's something you can already do. You can It'd spec out the the moderate, yeah, heel stack. But um, if you mean like the H and W exact toe shape, or like the last with the an arch last piece, with an arch piece, I don't think we would do that. No. But um, it just goes against. You the can get a block the heel last. on a high arch yep. right now. Mm-hmm. I've got um, a couple pair like that, and they're it's pretty great. Yeah. So, apologies if if I'm if we are not understanding your question. So so feel free to to clarify. Um, can you order a lug sole without the screws? Um, you can. Uh, so, uh, if this question is to remove the metal, uh, we have the wire cutter, 
which has no, for EH for EH purposes mm -hmm. has no screws, also no nails in the heel stack, or at least no exposed nails and in that's the heel a, stack. And that's a lug, right? Yeah, yeah. Is that a unit? No, no. Okay. Yeah, so it's cool. got a independent leather heel stack. They just put a thin piece of rubber um, to cover up the the metal of the nails. And then they glue the rubber heel stack, oh, right, or the right, right. rubber okay. heel cap for right, that. Right, right. Yeah. So check out the wire cutter. Um, that is a lug sole without the screws. Yep. When can we get a quick ship wedge sole river fronts? Um, <laughs> I already got that one. You already did it, didn't you? Well, no, no. no. We we already okay. talked about this. We just got the twenty sixty soles in. Um, mock toe river fronts are on the website, though. I think we're actually having some issues with. Well, no, we're not. We. Do we figure it out? It's it's just a time thing. Um, gotcha. Because of the the new tongue, so we'll we'll get that figured out. Okay. Um, the hooligan moto is very so. Yes, we will do that. Sorry, the hooligan moto is a very nice boot. But have you thought about making a harness boot as well? Harness boot. Oh, harness boots have a. It's like the rings. It's a it's a different look. Have we gotcha. Have, have we ever done that? We, we had have. we had some. I feel in, like we've we done had that. some in the archives. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but but like archives from before I got here, they're probably mm -hmm. seven, eight years old. Yeah, it's a popular style. So, I mean, um, yeah. I don't I don't see why not. That I think that'll be like a decently intense development. I think eventually, yes. Um, I just ordered a pair from Adelaide, Australia. What's the most remote location on Earth? Someone has ordered a pair of Nick's boots from. Maybe Adelaide, Australia. I'm trying, like, I'm trying to think what's further away than that. So that would be like the interior of Asia, basically. Oh, that might be close, man. Well, Perth maybe is further. My Australian geography is not the best. I'm trying to remember. I can't like remember. India? If I'm I think we've shipped some stuff to India. Making this but up or not. Is not. But I feel like there was away. a customer going to Antarctica. I don't know if they were taking the boots with them, though. Okay. And we didn't ship them there. So I don't know if that counts. Yeah, you would be the best to answer this. What's, the, what's the some of the weirder locations you've seen? Um, I mean, honestly, our shipping locations haven't been that weird, but it's usually mm. people going weird places. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I don't know. that. It's probably, probably somewhere on the west coast of Australia would be my guess. Anyway, good question. Um... Yeah, like we, we, you know, I was just looking at this, you know, our, our biggest non-U.S. countries are either adjacent to us, actually Canada and Mexico, or Commonwealth, former, former British, com or British Commonwealth countries like, like Australia and New Zealand. And so, uh, good, good question. Um, and we get a lot of YouTube views from too. all over India, the Pakistan. Even, Very international on yep. YouTube. Um, any plans specifically law tanning cognac? I think this is an old question. Drunk advice. Oh, that's probably an old question. We launched that <clears throat> like two weeks ago. So sorry about that. We did it. Um, any more details on the boots coming to compete with Japanese brands, slimmer last, fancier dress designs? So did someone leak something? I did. I've talked about it a little bit. Oh, um, yeah. No, it's fine. So so yeah, it'll be um, more of a dress boot last. Um, I would call it, yeah, a fancier dress boot. Um, mm -hmm. We'll be using fancier leathers you know we're working through the kind of finalizing the lasts and the patterning right now we've put the kind of leathers that we've chosen to to work with through and they they look they look awesome mm -hmm. um definitely an elevated an elevated appearance so i um, excited to get that going but yeah i mean you know you'll see more attention to detail on the finishing although i think we're already pretty good at that mm -hmm. um, but really you know it's like why can't we make some of the best, most finished dress boots in the world. I don't think there's any reason why we can't. Um, and so that's sort of the direction we'll be going this year. And I think you'll see a really compelling product. Um, and, you know, maybe the benefit of the approachability of our brand, you know, in terms of like customer service, you know, maybe an elevated customer service experience, ordering online easily, communication through all of our channels with us, whether that's, you know, Reddit, uh, obviously email and phones and, and Instagram, you know, we're, we're everywhere. So, um, trying to make that entry point a little more approachable than, um, flying to Japan and meeting with, you know, meeting with somebody, you know, and like, uh, 
mm. getting getting everything measured. And, and so I don't think it'll be exactly like that experience, but hopefully approaching that kind of level of, of quality and finishing and, um, you know, not not as expensive, obviously. So, yeah, that that's kind of the, the hope there. Why can't I get a rough out toe cap on a smooth boot? Um, the short answer to this is if everything is possible, then it slows things down is really the short answer to it. And so we match the toe cap to whatever the, the finish is on the mm. bottom, the, the yeah. lower. Yeah. It's a never ending battle too. Yeah. You know? I mean, uh, it's, it's somebody's going to want different color stitching on different yeah. pieces and different parts. And I think for me, it's one of the most difficult parts of my job is, you know, especially since sales and production are all in one building, mm -hmm. we get the question all the time, like you guys can do it. Why don't you do it? Yeah. Yeah. We can do a lot of things, yep. um, but there's pros and cons to everything. You know, if we had mm -hmm. options of rough out, toe cap, heel counter, different color stitching, which we did all this in the past, yeah. and we made a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm amazed at how many options we offer now yeah. mm -hmm. and like the very low number of mistakes yeah. that get yeah. made. Yeah, um, it's really true. And so like I'd say there's two components to it. Like one, I think you have to create either a family or a model of boots like Overlander or like Becca or something like that that tells the boot maker that there is a difference in a fundamental difference in how you're going to do this. Mm -hmm. And so like a Becca, for example, is a single stitch, but that's our women's boot. And we think that looks a little more elegant. So that's why we just offered on that. The other part of it is it's all just about how many times does the craftsman have to look at the bomb, double check things, look down, look up, do the job, pass it on. And it's really not like a boot capability standpoint. It's just more like production efficiency. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you're telling somebody like, hey, you need to be checking every single step along the way. That just takes more time and mm -hmm. costs more money and, right. um, you know. Kind of taking it back to the question, if you wanted a, just a rough out toe cap, then for you to have that, it would mean that the sewers would have to check every bomb. Right. And that, that's the, a good point. Yeah. Well, so and it's not just the sewers. It's every operator yeah. after that. Yeah, cutting, because when yeah. lasting gets the boot, they're that's like, right. this has a rough out toe cap like, and the rest of it is wrong. smooth. Is yeah. that wrong? And they have yeah. to go back to Katrina and ask her. Yep. And then, and then, then Katrina has to come double yeah. check with me. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 So it's, 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 I hope that makes sense because it's not just about, oh, I need to check this one bomb bill of materials that comes through. It actually has a cascading effect mm -hmm. where every single bill of materials needs to be checked. Um, for this new thing. And so anytime we can kind of like unify an expectation for the craftspeople, that helps a lot mm -hmm. with efficiency and reduction in, in mistakes and, and quality control. So that's that's really the short answer, well, the long answer to, to mm -hmm. your short question. Mm -hmm. right, I'm out of questions. Oh, no. What happened, really? to your, what happened to your pocket, Nathan? That's my question. Oh, I oh. bought it like this. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. a, a campfire ember, somebody said. Oh, here's a new question. Um, do you have any plans for any more apparel options later this year? <laughs> yes, in fact, we do. Great um, question, listener. So we'll be uh, we'll be bringing on some um, some some things that I think you know you'll be excited about. Um, I would love to like, and I think maybe I'll add, add this as a prompt in our next Q and A. Is like, what would you like to see in some stuff from us? Um, you know, as we, as we're working on this, uh, both either in boots or apparel. Um, I think we were pretty successful with like the jackets and the, and the vests. And I um, yeah. think we're working on other stuff with, with that same company, but, uh, but yeah, just looking for your feedback on like, how can we, how can we get better? I think it was a good first try, but you know, I think we can definitely refine some things, especially like in the sizing and the patterning and that sort of thing. But, uh, but yeah, let us know. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate it. And, uh, hope you have a great finish to the week. Really appreciate the time. Bye. Outro music.